Hey everybody, Steve Parisi here with IBC Global. Hope your day is off to a great start. So I am here with Scott Witt again, uh, president of Witt Actuarial Services. Scott, how you doing? Good, how are you, Steve? Good, good, thanks for asking. So we've got a, a good topic today, which which I learned quite a bit from Scott on, which really just has to, has to do with paying premiums and the frequency in which you pay a premium. If you're gonna pay annual, or anything else really, <laughs> other than annual, I had to mention, mainly monthly is the other option, but the difference between paying premiums and the, the frequency as far as how that works. So yeah, if you wanna shed a little bit of light on that, kind of what we were talking about earlier, uh, I think listeners would, would love it. Yeah, so this is, this is a dirty little secret within the insurance industry that generates a lot of profit for insurance companies. And so I'd, I'd like to shed a little bit of light on that for uh, our listeners, and it's sort of a, it's sort of some low hanging fruit that they can implement immediately and improve their financial well being. Uh, and basically, I'm talking about almost any insurance product other than Universal Life. Universal Life is very flexible and very transparent, and it's processed on a monthly basis. So if you pay premiums uh, more frequently that's automatically reflected in the in, in, and incorporated in the calculations for a universal life policy. But for whole life insurance, term insurance, long-term care, disability, for those products, for the most part, there is an internal financing charge if you elect to pay other than annually. And what is so sneaky about it is that when these policies are sold and illustrated, everything is shown on an annual basis. And typically the consumer decides that they're going to make the, the purchase decision. And then once that decision has been made, the agent or the company will say, well, wouldn't it be convenient to pay on a monthly basis directly from your checking account, maybe do some sort of electronic funds transfer. And there's no doubt it's more convenient. But Steve, would you be willing to pay 8% interest for that privilege um, if, if, if they told you that? And they don't, they don't tell you what the interest rate is. And let's say it is some, somewhere between 5 and 8% on many of the policies that are being sold today. That's a very high internal borrowing cost in today's extremely low rate environment. And for somebody who may have the money sitting in their checking account or savings account already or sitting in a money market, why in the world would they agree to a five, six, seven, eight percent financing charge for the privilege of paying monthly rather than annually? And what's staggering is if you look at the present value impact over the, the life of a typical policy by you choosing to pay on a monthly basis rather than an annual basis, the present value cost today is typically more than one whole premium. So, you know, people, people get excited about reducing agent compensation and we can save roughly a, a whole annual premium by reducing or, or virtually eliminating agent compensation. But you can do the same thing by being smart with how you pay premiums. And does it require you to be a little bit more diligent with your cash flow uh, if you're paying on an annual basis than on a monthly basis? It does but you're, you're well compensated for doing that. What I find even more shocking and what should be more compelling for the listener is that there are many policies that were sold in the 80s and the early 90s that the internal financing charge is double digits. I've seen rates as high as 15 or 16%. And now for, for people to continue to be paying monthly or quarterly or even semi-annual premiums on a policy with that high of a financing charge is beyond absurd. Yeah, they probably just don't know. No, they have no idea. And <laughs> companies are not required to disclose it. Um, Joe Belf is a is a longtime consumer advocate within the industry. He's a he's a re retired professor and just a brilliant man. We're, we're we're lucky to still have him with us, pumping out good content. He he has. Uh, a blog online. Um, I think it goes by the insurance forum. That was his publication too. He has long been an advocate of mandatory disclosure uh, of what he calls an annual percentage rate. 
And he has made available a calculator uh, on his website. Uh, I, I don't know the URL off the top of my head, but I know for those that are interested in, in looking for it, you can find that. It's, it's a simple calculation. Uh, anyone who has a basic knowledge of Excel could, could probably figure out the annual rate equivalent. And, and there are some rough rules of thumb. A lot of people make a mistake though in, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll take the monthly premiums, multiply it by 12, and they'll say, well, that's 4% bigger than the annual premium. And they'll think that it's a 4% interest rate, but really it's closer to an 8% interest rate because on half, on average, you only had half of that money being borrowed over the course of the year. And so when the sum of your premiums is 4% greater than the annual premium you could have paid, that's more like an 8% internal financing charge. Now that that's rough, but it's much closer to eight than it is to four. Yeah, yeah, no, it's interesting. And I see, I've seen one insurance company disclose something like exactly what you just mentioned. <laughs> and I remember an agent that sat down, sat down and did the math before. They said, hey, I'm looking at the difference between annual and monthly. I calculate it, it comes out to 4%. Yet disclosed within the, the full contract, you see here's your annual premium. And then if you pay monthly, quarterly or semi-annual, it ranged, I think it was between 9.5 to 9.6%, the actual percentage charge that was disclosed. Yeah, so, that, it, yeah, yeah, it's, it's interesting where I, I don't see it disclosed a whole lot, but no, I mean, that's that's great. I mean, the way you, you explain that too, because normally that's not something I went into a whole lot. I mean, a lot of people we work with pay annually, but if we look at it monthly, we say, okay, there is an additional charge. It makes sense to pay annual. And we kind of leave it at that. Um, but the breakdown, no, that, thanks for, for shedding that light there. I mean, that that's something, especially the, the additional amount of money <laughs> the carrier well, is making from that. I, I think that's a great example of what having someone like a fee-only insurance advisor in your corner can do for you because there's nobody involved in that process from the insurance company's perspective that is motivated to really be upfront with the client about the ramifications of choosing monthly versus annual. The agent really is neutral. It's not going to affect their compensation and they're all for what what makes their 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 job easier, what makes life easier for their client and they want to make a sale. So if electronic funds transfer is a means for them to keep that policy in force and, and to keep the commissions coming, they're going to be all for it. I would say, I would go so far as to say the insurance companies have uh, a disincentive to educate the consumer because that that is a vast source of profit. If you have a big block of business on which you're receiving monthly premiums and the internal charge is 12 or 14 or 15 percent that is helping sustain profitability on that product now they may have factored it into it when they originally priced the product but nonetheless there is a financial motivation for the company to keep the client's head in the sand with respect to those internal financing charges yeah yes certainly no thanks for shedding light on that i've got got one question just and this kind of goes in with their planning and the individuals we work with how much, oh, if any, of of this would apply to the topic of unscheduled PUA? Some companies allow a consumer, a policyholder to throw PUAs in at leisure. Some require underwriting. And really, if they do or don't, that's not really my question. It's does any of that go on with unscheduled PUAs where you can see, hey, you're going to get hit with additional charges that are in, in excess of what you normally would there? Sure. So just just to to expand on that, when you say PUA, I think you mean paid up additions. Correct. That, Correct. Yep. Mm -hmm. So so if if a client is going to put in some additional premium in the hopes of making their policy more cash rich and more accumulation efficient, um, that that's a great question. You know, we're we're probably talking about a dividend paying policy there yeah, with, with that terminology, <laughs> and it's it's probably going to have annual processing. And so I think the important thing there is to understand when you put that premium in, is it going to be treated as if it was there for the entire year? And there could be some incentive for, let's say, making that premium payment 
20 days after the anniversary rather than 20 days before the anniversary. You know, from an insurance company pers perspective, they may treat those exactly the same. And from a processing perspective, they're probably going to have to assume that any paid up additions that they received came at the beginning of the policy year. And so the only word of caution I would give you there is if, if you're halfway through the policy year and you wanna dump in a lump of money into your policy, just clarify how that's going to be treated. Is the company going to treat it as if it was received six months ago? Are they gonna treat it as if it's received six months from now? Or do they have some sort of process whereby they can accurately reflect that it came in in the middle of the year? And that's very difficult and sophisticated for a whole life policy that really is set up with annual processing. Right, right. And I think that just kind of speaks to your value there as well, because that is is not that transparent because I mean we we have that incorporated into our practice where people hey I've got a lump sum of money I got a bonus I I sold a piece of property I got an inheritance whatever and they'll add it into their policy. Some companies one comes to my mind specifically actually states in their contract language hey if you throw PUAs in at a random time you'll have a prorated dividend they provide a little bit more transparency whereas most. I read, I'm like, all right, I, did I have to read it again? I don't see anything. It's very vague. So at having someone to ask those questions and just know how to ask them as well, because like you and I are, we live and breathe insurance and you to a, a much greater level versus a consumer. Like if you're working with someone, their profession is their profession. They're, they don't have time to do this all day. Just like I'm going to hire a lawyer or something like that. To, to focus on a certain area or CPA. I'm not going to sit there and try and figure out my taxes. He's going to do it <laughs> with a CPA. So it's the same thing in my case where as a policyholder, right, if I'm someone and I say, hey, I want to add money to a policy and I'm expecting it to produce a certain value and then it doesn't, that's where the disappointment comes in, the frustra frustration, where if I talk to someone like you first to say, okay, make sure you ask these questions, or here's how it will actually work. Now all of a sudden I'm like, okay, now I'm prepared. So this is why the value shows you know, 199,000 instead of 100,000, something like that, which some people might look at as an agent. Ah, it's not a big deal, but it is people's money that you're dealing with. Like you've gotta be as transparent as possible to prevent frustration, disappointment, or any bigger issues for that matter. Yeah, I completely agree. Yeah. Yeah. No, a great topic. Yeah. Thanks so much for, for shedding some light on that. I, I enjoyed that. Well, appreciate uh, you taking the time again to connect, Scott, and we will we'll talk to everyone next time. Sounds great. Thanks, Steve. Bye. Hey, guys. Steve Parisi here. If you enjoyed the content you just saw, please subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for future videos. If you'd like more information or to see some custom policies for yourself, feel free to call or email our offices at the contact information below.